Hey guys, in this video we're going to start talking about the squeeze theorem uh, and what the squeeze theorem is, is basically it's a nice way to evaluate some limits uh, that you otherwise might not be able to do. So uh, we're going to mention the squeeze theorem, uh, talk about why it might be true, and then we'll um, talk about the squeeze theorem at infinity. So uh, the squeeze theorem pretty much says if f of x is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to h of x uh, for all x near x equals c and if the limit as x goes to c of f of x equals the limit uh, as x goes to c of h of x uh, equals some number l then the conclusion is that uh, the limit as x goes to c of g of x also equals l okay? so the reason pretty much is because uh, g here is squeezed between f and h and if f and h have the same limit uh, as x goes to c then g must also have that same limit uh, because around x equals c, g is squeezed between f and h. So um, the squeeze theorem is also sometimes called the pinching theorem or the sandwich theorem or uh, more colloquially it's referred to as the sandwich theorem but uh, you know whatever. So let's see a graph of uh, an example here. Um, here we have a function, uh, the blue curve here is y equals f of x so following along here this is our f of x um, and then g of x is the green one here Okay, this is our g of x, and uh, h of x is the kind of wavy one up here, the purple one. Um, all right, so we see that uh, close to x equals c, you know, we can ignore all the other stuff out here. So see, there's crazy stuff going on over here, um, over here, they're crisscrossing all that good stuff. But um, when we apply the squeeze theorem for the limit as x goes to c, all we care about is what happens around c. So we can just cover up all that other stuff. And uh, we see, uh, we notice here that when x is close to c, uh, f of x is always on the bottom here. Okay, oops, here's our f of x here. It's always on the bottom. Uh, and then g of x is the green one that's always in the middle, close to x equals c. And then h of x, the purple one, always on top when we're close to x equals c. Alright, so um, basically what we see is that g of x is squeezed uh, between f of x and h of x. And uh, because of that, um, if f and h have the same limit as x goes to c, then uh, g of x must also have that same limit because it is squeezed or pinched or sandwiched between f and h. All right. Um, so there are a couple of important things to mention here. Uh, one is that uh, these functions f, g, and h, they don't really even need to be defined at c, right? Because remember, we're taking a limit as x goes to c, and uh, the limit could still exist even if the function is not defined there. So we've seen a few examples of that, right? <clears throat> um, the only thing that matters is that f, g, and h are all defined close to x equals c. Okay? They have to be defined near x equals c. Uh, and what does that really mean to say near? Uh, what it really means is uh, the functions have to be defined near x equals c, which means on a tiny open interval around x equals c. So if you can find an open interval around x equals c uh, where the functions are defined, then you're all good. And um, how tiny can it be? As tiny as you want. Uh, it just has to be some open interval, no matter how teeny tiny. It could be really super huge, or it could just be really teeny tiny. It doesn't matter. Um, what else should we mention here? Oh, this uh, also applies to one-sided limits. Okay, so here this is stated with two-sided limits. Limit as x approaches c, right? Limit as x approaches c. But you could also have limits from the left or limits from the right. So um, if all the limits are one-sided, uh, if, like if they're all from the left, that'll still work. If all these limits are from the right, that'll still work. Um, and we can also have this uh, apply to limits at infinity. So if we want to use limits at infinity, uh, that's kind of where this is the most useful, but we have to phrase this a little bit differently. So um, let's go ahead and rewrite this a little bit. We're just going to change a few things around here and see how we can apply this to limits at infinity. So if f of x is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to h of x, for all x, uh, now we're going to get rid of this, for all x greater than big M and if limit as x goes to positive infinity of f of x equals the limit as x goes to uh, positive infinity of h of x equals L then the limit as x goes to positive infinity of g of x also equals L All right. So we see it's a little bit different here. Um, now instead of near x equals c, we're taking limits at infinity, so we want to say x greater than m. Uh, why is that? What does this really mean? Well, what it's saying is that, uh, okay, well, first of all, 
if we take a limit as x goes to infinity, uh, remember we're shooting off x really far to the right. So when we take a limit at infinity, uh, the only thing we really care about is what happens if x is really super far to the right. So um, to use the squeeze theorem, we need to have this condition true. Uh, g has to be squeezed between f and h, right? But um, it doesn't have to be true all the time, right? Like in this graph we saw here, it only had to be true around x equals c. Well now, if we're taking a limit as x goes to infinity, uh, the squeezing part has to be true just for some x far enough to the right. Okay, so what is big M? Well, big M could be as small as we want or as big as we want, it doesn't really matter. But as long as there is some number big M such that uh, G is squeezed between F and H for all X larger than big M, uh, and if this limit condition is true, then we can say this. Okay, so again, for all X greater than M means uh, if X goes far enough to the right past some number M, and if uh, this holds true beyond that, and if this limit is true, uh, or if these limit conditions are true, then we can say this. All right. So uh, that's important to keep in mind there. And um, in the next few videos, we're going to use some uh, we're going to do some examples that use this uh, phrasing of the squeeze theorem here. So we can also have this for uh, negative infinity. So the changes aren't really that uh, big, but let's just go ahead and do that just for the sake of being uh, thorough. So if f of x is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to h of x for all x less than m and if the limit as x goes to uh, negative infinity now of f of x equals the limit as x goes to negative infinity uh, of h of x equals some number l then the limit as x goes to negative infinity of g of x also equals l so this is pretty much just like with the limits at positive infinity but now x is going to negative infinity so we shoot x off really far to the left All right. So um, now what we say, uh, and when we take limits at a negative infinity, uh, we only really care about what happens as x goes super far to the left. So that's why we only need this squeezing condition to be true for all x less than some number m. So in other words, if this squeezing condition is true uh, after x goes far enough to the left, is pretty much what this part says, uh, and if these limits are the same, then this limit for g must also be the same thing because as x goes far enough to the left, g uh, is pinched between f and h here. All right. So that's the squeeze theorem at negative infinity. So in the next couple of videos, uh, we'll see some examples of uh, how to use this.